Let's start with the first one, innovation characteristics, perceived relative advantage. If the physician find e-detailing is more convenient for them than traditional detailing, then most probably they will use e-detailing. <clears throat> if it was more compatible with their experience, with their practice setting, most probably physician will adopt e-detailing. And complexity, if they find some type of complexity for using the e-detailing, most probably they will not use e-detailing. And by the way, these are, when I uh, uh, designed this model, these are a proposed uh, hypothesis. And I did some research in order to find, you know, if they are right or uh, wrong. Peer influence as a part of communication channels. If the physician uh, or if the physicians around in his practice area or in her practice area are using e-detailing, then most probably that physician will adopt e-detailing. Social system, academic affiliation, that's one of the main important questions. Are the physicians with academic affiliation with a university or hospital, do they more likely adopt e-detailing or not? Presence of restrictive policy for traditional detailing. Are the, you know, most of the hospitals and clinics, they have some type of policy to restrict the contact of pharmaceutical sales representative with physicians. So my question was, if you increase the restrictive policy or in the setting where there, there is a high restrictive policy for interaction with pharmaceutical sales representative, will that increase the adoption of the e-detailing or decrease? I propose here that it will decrease, but we will see the results at, at the end. Rural practice settings. There are some reports saying that specifically the video e-detailing is more common among the physicians who are practicing in rural area. Practice, uh, practice setting size. Does the practice setting size have any influence on physician adoption of e-detailing or not? Smaller versus the bigger one. Physician characteristics. Are the primary care physicians more likely to adopt e-detailing or less? Years in practice. I think this is a common sense so that always the higher years in practice or the older physicians, they are less likely to adopt any type of technology. Gender. Is there a difference between male, female? Attitude, sword, informational usefulness, credibility, understandability, and applicability. Gifts as incentives. Does the physician participate in e-detailing if you did not provide them with incentive or not? Volume prescription. <clears throat> so what I did, uh, what I did is, first of all, I did a male survey to a, a small sample size. It was around 200 physicians. Uh, after that, when I received uh, the responses, I modified my survey according to their comments. After that, I discovered that there is a problem in my survey. Uh, and that what make me interested to do a personal interviews. I met with uh, physicians, uh, focus group, and some interviews, one to, uh, one to one. And I asked them about e-detailing. And I was shocked or surprised even. When I start to ask them about, do you use e-detailing? All of them say, you know, what is e-detailing? <laughs> they did not recognize this concept, you know. They do not. One of the physicians told me, is it the D DVD that they usually the pharmaceutical companies send to us by mail? They, they did not have any idea what's the meaning of e-detailing. So I tried to tell them how is the procedure usually in order to get recruited and invited to do e-detailing. And they, some of them say, yeah, yeah, I have been invited before and I have participated in, that, in the e-detailing. But I don't know that it is called e-detailing. So that made me interested when I did my big study to write a brief introduction about e-detailing. Because I don't want someone to think e-detailing is just a DVD or, or uh, you know, uh, something that you, uh, a, a medical education, continuing medical education materials to be included as e-detailing. We don't want to be uh, there confounding factors in my study. And I will show you what uh, I have introduced in, my, in the beginning of my survey. 
So uh, I did send my survey to 2,000 physicians who are practicing in Iowa, okay? Usually, uh, I contacted them up to three times. Incentive was provided. By the way, the incentive was very low. It was just a drawing for five gift certificate, $50. And by the way, I, uh, we, we were able to offer more than that. But the thing here, you don't want the physicians who are only interested in financial incentive to participate in your study. Because it, there will be bias. You don't want that. So we try to make the financial incentive as low as possible. Uh, of the 2,000 surveys, we get 671 responses, which make around 35 response rate, which is, you know, good response rate. It's around more than one third of physicians responded to our survey. This is, was the first page of our survey, just to tell them, you know, that uh, this is about e-detailing. And then this was the introduction about e-detailing, just to tell them what's, you know, interactive versus video e-detailing, so they can recognize what I am talking about. I don't know if the other studies who usually study e-detailing provide this or not. Because if you did not, you know, explain to the physicians what is e-detailing, no one will be able to answer this question. They will say maybe, yeah, I use it, but they did not, do not recognize it. So it's very important to tell them that this is e-detailing. This is what I mean by e-detailing. This is some of the concepts uh, uh, or you know, the measures that we have used that represent innovation characteristics and communication channels. This is also physician attitudes and gift as incentive. And the red one is uh, I would have the same degree of participation in e-detailing whether or not promotional gifts were distributed. We were interested to see the role of the gifts as incentive. Okay. One of the things that I think it's very important to, to mention even quickly, you know, that we get a good response rate. I know that some studies that they do on e-detailing, they get very low response rate, usually less than 10%. But why we get a good response rate, you know, uh, you know directly, I can tell you honestly, that we use the academic letterhead. Since our surveys were sent from academic institution, usually physicians trust that. That was a good thing, you know, that we could, uh, were able to get a response rate around 35%. And even uh, we sign each letter, you know, and it was also personalized. But I think the main reason for, you know, getting a good response like 35% uh, again, because it's, the survey was sent from academic institution. So we did <clears throat> different types of uh, analysis. We did the frequency analysis, descriptive, correlation, reliability, factor analysis, a lot of them. But <clears throat> I will focus today on two types of analysis. And that, uh, the first one is the bivariate analysis, which is chi-square test and the independent t-test, 